for happiness, we want better bodies, we want more money, we want better lifestyle, better relationships. And all of those things True. are centered around something we'll talk about here in a minute mm -hmm. uh, that I call the 60-20-20 rule of achievement and success and abundance. And it really is, it's 60% psychology, what mm -hmm. goes on between our ears, it's 20% energy and emotion, and 20% attractiveness. And wow. those things, that's the key. You, you make a shift in any one of them, even just a little bit of shift, you change the trajectory of your outcome. Incredible, okay, so I wanna learn, let's go way back to the very beginning, and then I wanna know how you came up with that through your life, because I'm sure there's a whole story behind that. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, so tell me how this all began for you. Well, I grew up not too far from here. I grew up in a place called Lancaster, California. Yep. Yeah, you know where that is. And um, mm -hmm. I grew up there and I had, you know, I, I, want, I want to say a great childhood. My father was in the service and a very disciplined guy, so he taught me a good work ethic and everything. But when I was 17 and a half years old, Tanya, three grown men tried to take my life because of the color of my skin. And they left me for dead. And um, oh very long story short, yeah. Wow, yeah. That left me feeling worthless. It left me feeling like there was something wrong with me. And I became homeless. I lived in a cardboard box in a, at a drive-in. At 17? At 17. Where was your father? My father, actually, they had just, the, my father was in the Air Force. He'd retired out there, and he'd moved to a place called Ridgecrest, California, further out there. So he had it's, to go. You cho chose to I stay. I chose to stay there. But nobody knew I was homeless, not even my family. And that drove me to a point that um, I, you know, quite honestly, was close to suicidal. But why didn't and you tell anybody? Because of my pride. And that is, by the way, psychology. That was my right. psychology, my pride. Wow. I didn't, nobody knew. So what happened that and, day, though, that you were, that you were well, taken? Or? Well, what changed with me was this. Um, I was homeless for about four and a half months. It doesn't seem like a long time, but every day when you're homeless is oh, an eternity. Is a long time, yeah. And something happened to me. Somebody gave me a book. Somebody that I didn't know, it was a kind stranger, gave me a book, and the book was called Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yes. And I always tell people, I, I got the book, and I read the book, and I did the exercises in the book, because I was desperate. And the exercises set me on a path, and then when I went back to the, to the person, because it changed my life, within weeks, everything changed. And um, mostly what changed was my self-esteem and my opinion of myself, my belief about myself. And when I went back to the gentleman to thank him, I said, what do I do for you? Because that's the way I was raised. I was raised that you, 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 know, you pay, pay it forward. And, and what he said to me was he, he said, you do the same thing that I've done for you for as many people as you possibly can for the rest of your life. Wow. And I was, by this time, getting close to 18 years old, 19 years old. Uh, and I didn't really take it seriously then, right. Tanya. Um, but as time went on, I did. And that's why I do what I do right now. So I first realized I had my own challenges, and that's why I went after psychology as my major, if you will. And um, I... <laughs> so you went back to school then? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, I always say, physician, heal thyself. You know, those of us that are in this line of work, if we're honest with ourselves, we started it because we needed to fix ourselves. And um, so I did, and I studied traditional psychology first, and then I moved into neuropsychology, which fascinated me. Right. And the difference is, traditional therapy, I have one way of interacting with you, and that is through my voice. Mm -hmm. But neuropsychology, look at neuro as your five senses. And so, as a neuropsychologist, I have five ways to enter your world on a, on a personal level and help you get your outcome. And I, had a, you know, I was driving in here today and I drove past my office. I had an office here in Los Angeles here oh, wow. where I help people get over fears and phobias and emotional challenges for about six years, while I was teaching at UCLA, by the way. And um, I, I enjoyed it, and I still do. Um, I've moved on to you know, bigger audiences mm -hmm. now, but that's where it all started, and, and I love doing it because I still, at the risk of sounding too noble, that's my, my passion in life, is to do what that guy said to me, was to give back as much as possible. Did you know at a young age, though, that you were meant to do something great? I did. Right? I did. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, up until that point where those guys took that from me, I always thought I would, because I was, I was raised that way. My, my parents uh, taught us, myself and my siblings, that we were special and that we were meant to be something, and they, they taught us that, and I believed that with the exception of, um, let's just say, in this country, there is a, actually it's all over the world right now, there is a constant badgering of our souls, at the risk of sounding too grand. No, it's true. It, it, it really it's is, really to true. keep us down, to keep us feeling like we're not enough yeah. and, and all those things. And so um, I was able to resist that up until that point, and then 
I mean, it's moderately, but, but at that point, it shattered it for me. And I compare myself, I don't use myself as some shining example of the way that things mm -hmm. should be, but I do use myself as an example of what's possible because um, somebody helped me and now I'm here to help other people. And so that was what just changed the entire, yeah. and why you do what you're doing yeah. today. But you did know at a young age that you were meant for something more. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, right? I remember when I was like six or seven years old, and it was all because of the input of my parents. Yeah. Um, six or seven years old, I felt like, well, I'm going to do something great. I don't know what it is but I'm going to do something great, and, and I believed that. Yeah. So what do you say to people, because you, you know this, there's a lot of people suffering yeah. right now, mm -hmm. and they have no direction, they have no this. What do you say to people to get, what's that first step that you, you know, it's hard. Yeah, it is. And it you is. went through it. I, um, it's, it's simple, but not easy. And so to answer your question, the first thing I say to people is, first off, relax chill out it's because if, if I you know I was thinking about this the other day people say this all the time what would you say to your younger self right. well you're your younger self now because you're gonna be older so say it to you now but if I was gonna say something to my older self my younger self it would be chill out dude everything's gonna be fine just relax and go after it but how do you say that when you're homeless well because even then even then because what happens is when we are in turmoil when we're in challenge we're only looking at the challenge we're only looking at what's wrong and that creates what I call call uh, well, the, the antithesis of awesome sauce it creates this flood of chemicals and solutions endorphins and adrenalines in our body that causes us yes. to, to remain feeling bad but as soon as we go, let me look at what I want. Even though if we don't believe it, if we just keep looking at what we want, then those same chemicals, I call it awesome sauce, change and, are, and we feel better and we start to feel hopeful and then we will do more and then we'll have more. Now, did you start to feel hopeful at all before he gave you the book or was it really that no. book? You no, it just, was the book. You were just... It was the book. And, and, and the book um, caused me to really just quite simply from a psychological standpoint, it's just change my focus. Instead of, you know, feeling sorry for myself, and, and I have the right to do that, you know, as we all do. We have the yes. right, you know, bad yes. is bad. Bad yeah. stuff happens. Bad is bad. Um, and, um, and just, again, we have well, five senses, but one of them is probably the most prominent one in most people is what we look at. And so I always say, whatever you look at with your eyes open or your eyes closed is what you're going to feel. And what you're going to feel is what you're going to do. People drive into telephone poles because they're looking at the pole. They don't want to look at that pole, and but they get scared, and it locks their body into doing that. So using that same philosophy, um, you just look at what you want. So it, very simply, it is to get look, look, people would come into my office all the time, and they'd go, "I don't want to feel this way." And I go, "How can I help you?" And they go, "I'm depressed." I don't want to feel this way. And I go, okay, great. What do you want? And they go, I'm suicidal. I don't want to feel this way. And I go, okay, great. What do you want? And they go, I told you. I hate myself. I hate my life. And I go, okay, what do you want? And they go, I, and they get angry with me. Right. They're not answering your question. No, but here's what it is. They're looking, they're telling me what they don't want. And right. because they're looking at what they don't want, literally looking at it with their, with their mind, that's the way they feel. So then I get them and okay, so share with me what you really want. I'll interrupt their pattern. I'll share with me. And they go, well, I want to be happy. And as soon as they do that, I know the chemicals are flowing. And then I say, tell me what that's like. And, and obviously I'm making this you know, very quick right now, but taking them through the process of helping them look at what they want, that's what changes people. And then through neuro linguistics or what I call neural encoding, I anchor that in them so that they automatically default to that versus what they were defaulting to before. Wow, okay, so <laughs> wow, no, it's awesome. But so one of the biggest steps that you can tell somebody is to really change your frame of mind. Chill first, Right. relax first, because uh, I'll ask you this. Okay. Have you, ever, have you ever done this? Have you ever been sitting in your house or somewhere and you go, I gotta go get an ink pen out of the kitchen. You stand up and you go in the kitchen and then you're in the kitchen going, why did I, did I come in here? <laughs> okay. <And> that, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, yeah, but that's everybody. And yeah. that is a, uh, in, in the neural psychology field, that's something that we call a pattern interrupt or a, a mind shift or a break. And that is whatever you're focused on in the moment, if something happens or if, you sh if something radical happens, you stand up, something, you know, a sound happens or something, three things, ha four things happen in that moment. Number one, you're no longer in that mindset. You're, you're, you're taken away from that. Number two, you create what's called a scotoma, which is a blank spot in the mind. Number three, that scotoma is a vacuum. And it's going, what? It's curiosity. And then number four, you're highly suggestible in that moment.
So if you literally make yourself feel bad on purpose, think about what you don't want, and then shake yourself out, you create that scotoma, and then make yourself happy, then you put the happiness in there, so the very thing that would make you sad or unresourceful in the very beginning now makes you happy. You are just awesome, I love all that, I'm soaking it up. So was it, what inside of you though, if I were to ask you this, like I know that he gave you the book and there was mm -hmm. that moment and you're like, well, I'm gonna you know, pay it forward or whatever, but there are plenty of times when people help other people and those people still don't feel like they need to help anyone. Like what about you inside of you? There's gotta be more that has caused you to just keep going and helping and devoting your life to making a difference in other people's lives. That's a great question, Tana, Tanya, and I think Again, I had great upbringing, great parents who taught us uh, to give back and to, that, that's just a part of who we are. Uh, uh, but to take that a step further, I think that if more people, listen, all of us like helping other people. I don't care how selfish you are, um, we do. That's, that's part of the, the human mm -hmm. condition. Yeah. And so the more of it we do, you know that old saying that the, the secret to living is giving, the more of it that we do, and the more that we recognize that we're helping somebody else, um, the better we feel. And so for me, I would say it's my upbringing, but then I also had to condition it in. Because remember, I was 17, I was 18 by the time that happened, and I was still a selfish teenager. Mm -hmm. you know, it was all about me. Yeah, you're going and, through it. Yeah, and you're going wow. through it. So um, I think what I say to people is this, try it out. You know, experiment. What, giving. giving, even if you feel like you don't have anything. Exactly, just and, that, go and that's and a really good point because right. most people feel like I'll give when I have enough. Exactly, yeah. so true. But it's the other way around. It is the other way around. Couldn't you agree know, more. Uh, I always say that the pursuit of more, and specifically, I'll say this: mm -hmm. the pursuit of money right now. And don't get me wrong, I love having money. It's great. You know, I like nice stuff and everything. But the pursuit of, of money, it, even and especially in the ways that we're taught to pursue it nowadays, yeah. is, is, let me start here. There's many roads to success. There really is. But the pursuit of money is the slowest. It truly is. But it's the number one thing that most of us are pursuing these mm -hmm. days. But it's only like the, only the upper 5% of people are, are financially abundant, and the upper 1%, half a percent, are the ones that are healthy, wealthy, and all those things. And so, um, associated with pursuing money is crime, is um, you know failed relationships, poor health, obesity, all of those things, stress, all of those things, in the pursuit of it. So instead, I'm, I'm not saying don't go after it, I'm just saying let's go after it a different way. And because it, it's easy for somebody on, on the other side that has money to go, listen, it's not about the money. It oh, is about I know. The money. I've, that's what happens. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, because you got it. Yeah. Okay. It is about the money when <laughs> it, you don't have it. it, it but is, I'm just saying, yeah. happily go after it and you'll do it faster. You know, my brand is, you asked me before, is further faster. Yes. Do you want what you want sooner rather than later? And the answer with everybody is absolutely yes. Of course. So yeah. the methodology in doing so is much simpler than we've been led to believe. And it's not what you know, it's what you do with here, here, and here. What you think, how you feel, and how you physically approach the world and you go in the world, that's what changes everything. And you'll do it happily, you'll get it faster, you'll feel better about it. And here's the greatest part about it, is that we affect other people around us that they get inspired by us as well. I so appreciate you and admire you, what you do. You told me your story about what, you. What's, what you, why you do this here. Yeah. And you're doing it and you're changing lives and that's affecting people. And Thank so you. your journey, the way you're pursuing And this pursuing is all, it, I'm not getting paid to do this. This is all my passion yeah. project, it really is. And think of the lives that you're changing. You yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm honored to be on your Thank show and you. to do this, um, but you're, you're making a difference. And there's, in this day and age, unless you've been living under a rock, you know there's so much negativity. Oh, there's so much yes. you know, pounding down on us and causing us to feel worse. So, okay, so what would you say to, I'll tell you what, what something that's happened to me in this month alone. Mm -hmm. So I've had my computer stolen. Mm -hmm. I've had two of my friends that owe me a substantial amount of money just skip yeah. done. They're mm -hmm. like, I can't get a hold of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's gone. Um, I've, it's just, I've had this resounding feeling of people taking, taking, stealing. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people like that? Like, how do people approach, or what would I say to, well, I can't because they're not talking back to me, but <laughs> what do you say to people that live, that think that that's okay to steal? Because really that's what they did to me. You know, I, I literally just left a post on Instagram about that. And the, the, the quote that I read was, never argue with people that Harriet Tubman would have 
left behind. Harriet Tubman ran the Underground Railroad and all that things. And there were a lot of slaves during those days that argued with her and even mm -hmm. turned her in. And she wouldn't argue with them. She'd just go, you go do your thing. So I would say to you, don't try and change them. They're, oh, yeah, you know, no, when, it's when they're, And yeah. so don't say anything to them. Don't argue right. with them. It's physician, heal thyself. The work needs to be done with you. True. And it starts with chill. Yes. And to say these words, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. It does. Look, yes. I had some jerks okay. break into my home a year and a half ago and stole everything that I valued. Everything, everything. every material thing that I valued. Oh. Oh, you know, and, wow. okay. and. So mine is nothing compared to what you went but, through. But. Well, here's what I'll say is when I heard about it, I was doing a seminar in, in, in uh, Florida, yeah. and I heard about it over the phone. The sheriffs called me and said, these guys are in my house. And it devastated me, because they were, you know, my mom passed away years ago, and she was a singer, and I had all my recordings of her, you know, all my, Why everything that I positioned. Why because it was in a safe, and they took everything. The whole, okay. And so it devastated me for about 20 seconds. And then something came over me. I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not happy that they stole my stuff. But I calmed down, and I was centered. I was centered enough that I was able to tell the uh, sheriffs something that it was about three or four months later I was able to get some of the stuff back. But here's my point. I have a default, and it's what I tell people. Let's work on your default so that when bad things happen, and they will, mm -hmm. that you default to a place of centeredness and that thing that I just said to you, mm -hmm. to recognize that this too shall pass. It's just part of life. This is an episode, and it's going to go on. Those haters, those energy uh, vampires, and those attention thugs, they're going to do what they do. And sometimes you're going to bounce off of them, but you're going to be okay. And as, as long as you're looking at what you want, and as long as you're doing the right thing, and as long as you're helping people, you know, whatever your religious beliefs in, God is going to find a way for you. You're going to be fine. This didn't happen here for you right now because you were focused on, you know, the bad people. This right. was you're focusing on what you can on do. On making a difference, because that's what it's about for me, too. So let's talk about... Um, I mean, you are incredible. Like, well, thank you. you are one of the most phenomenal speakers I have ever well, thank heard. You. And so, what do you love most, even about what you do now? Uh, that that same thing again about helping people. Here's, yeah. you know, I, I have the privilege of, of doing very large seminars. I'm in front of easily fifteen thousand people every month, oh, easily, sometimes love it. more. And um, the the most important part and the and the thrill of that is not being on stage. It's not. It's when I'm finished, when I'm walking off stage and I, I practice what I preach. I, I say, don't teach theory. Mm -hmm. I tell people that you got to reward yourself. So that's the happiest time for me. It's done. It's over. And then I know that anybody in that audience, my thing is, I say, I call it tell, show, try, do. And that is, I'm not going to just give you a motivational speech. I don't care if it's 45 minutes or as you, the event you were in, that was four days long. Yeah, yeah. And we're like 15 hours a day. Um, 45 minutes or 15 hours a day, four days, six days or whatever. Yeah, you were on a couple of days during that yeah. event. You're going to walk away with something that you're going to use, not just an experience, yeah. not just being motivated. You're going to walk away with a skill, a tool, because I that's what I'm all about is I want to give everything that I've learned in terms of methodology to get a result. One of my events that I do with my own, I say to people, bring me your worst nightmare, bring me your worst fear, bring me your worst uh, uh, memory, Anything that, that when you think about it causes you to be unresourceful because at one point in that day, you're not going to be able to feel it again. And it's not going to be something that I do to you. It's going to be something that I tell you, I show you, we try it together, you're going to get a result, and then you're going to go home with that tool. Wow, okay, so you take on private clients as well. I don't. Uh, don't. Okay. I, I did. I, I, I mean, you're so busy now, it's like, yeah. I can't. And I would yeah. love to, and uh, there's, three, there's two reasons why I don't anymore. One is just my schedule, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I value my time. The second is I ain't cheap. <laughs> yeah, and, I, I was thinking yeah, that too. I thought, yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's one-on-one, -on -one. and that's, you know, when I take on it, and I've had the privilege of working with Academy Award winning movie stars and, and actors and actresses and Grammy winners and things like that. They're my great friends and my clients, but they're also, it's, it's very time consuming. Yeah. So that's one-on-one. -on -one. I at my stage right now, I like to work with bigger, larger groups of nice. people. So that's I like events. You yeah. yeah, events are, I mean, I've seen you, you're incredible. So just quickly go through what it's like a day in your life. Like, what do you do? What's your what's your morning ritual? Well, it depends on whether I'm home or not. Let's go. Let's go through one of a pleasurable day. How's that? Okay, yeah. When I'm home. When you're home. Yeah, I wake up. I only sleep about four and a half hours, five hours a night, and I wake up. Energy. It's part of what I teach. Again, I won't teach theory. I wake up excited and energized, and I have a ritual. The morning ritual it takes me about 20 minutes that I do every morning, 
and um, I'm a single dad, so my dad, my son lives with me part time, and so when he's with me, I wake him up, get him ready for school. And How old's your son? He's 12. Okay. And uh, so he's at that age where he's starting to kick me to the curb. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, and then take him to school, and then I, uh, when I'm home, you know, because this is, you know, this, it's bifurcated. It's two different things. When I'm home, my favorite thing to do in life. I'm a musician. I, I used to, matter of fact, that's what brought me to Hollywood in the first place. Was your music. Was music. That's right. Yeah. I, had a, I had a deal with CBS Records back in the, in the olden days. And so I have a music studio in my home. I go in there, I play music for a little while, and then I come out and I just go about my day. The phone calls, the interviews, the, you know, things that I do, and, and, uh, and then pick the kid up, hang out with him. That's an ideal day with me. That sounds like a perfect day to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. You're also an author. Yes. You've written numerous books. Six. Six? Mm -hmm. I love it. So where can we learn more about you? Where can we buy your books? Where can we... You can, uh, you can find me on, on my website, which is my name, josephmcclendon.com. Okay, great. Or, um, or Instagram, please, because what I'm doing is now, I'm just pumping out uh, our content on uh, Instagram, which is I am Joseph McClendon. Uh, and, um, and you can join me at any of my events. You know, if you go to my website, you can see some of the events that I'm doing as well. Okay, awesome. I love this. Thank you so much. I know my how pleasure. busy you are, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule for this. My pleasure. Thank you for having <laughs> me. All right. So if you love this interview, make sure that you watch all of the other Life Master interviews. We have a podcast on iTunes. You can find us on the Ever Talk TV platform on Roku, on Apple TV, and, um, and that's it. So check us out. Thank you again so much. My pleasure. And we'll be back again with another episode coming up soon. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. You are so great. Did you like the interview? Absolutely. Did we get it all yeah, in? Yeah, you're a badass. All your stuff? Yeah.